Hello and welcome to Floyd Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Hobby Boss's massive 148 scale MiG-31 Foxhound. As you can see, this is an absolute beast. It just about fits it down here, as you can see. Uh, it's going to be a long aircraft. It's a big old jet, this one. Uh, as you can see up here, it's actually saying it's going to be just shy of 47.3 uh, centimetres. So it's going to be quite a large lump by 28 centimetres. So this is going to be a big jet. So a quick run around the box. You can see we've got a nice little side uh, profile down on there. A little bit about all about it down there, as you can see. And then got your kit number on this one 81753 and then over here we got a few little bits down there so obviously it's talking about it the weapons fit and the decals and it looks like we've got a little bit of photo etch in there as well so as you can see this is a big old box so and it is absolutely loaded all right so we've got the usual blunt and stuff like that you can see just down there from the top down the size of this thing is a monster this screw packs are absolutely loaded. Okay, so in here we've got the blurb, the sheet, colour call out, and everything else like that. If I just drop this top camera down a little bit for you. There we go. So we've got the usual paper sheet. It's actually quite thick this one. Proper little book this. Okay, so down in here, as we can see, we've got the usual sprue call outs. You can see lots of sprues. Okay, it's a big jet, this. This isn't something small. Usual thing then, um, starting off with the seats, we've got the ejector seats going down in there. Uh, we've got the cockpit set up uh, for the two seats, uh, the instrument panels, decals down there as well for the instruments, things like that right the way through. Some side paneling, which is quite nice. We've actually got the poles uh, for holding up the canopies, no doubt. Uh, more decals for the side ports, things like that. Okay, and then going in, we've got the top of the instrument panel with the heads up display, and then putting that cockpit tub into a two piece um, canopy, which is slightly different to what we saw with the AMK. All right, so anyway, front one going on, and then we've got the actual uh, front windscreen, that center uh, part for the windscreens as well, going through in between the pilot and the rear. Okay, and then straight forward into the intakes, big old square intakes on these. A little bit of detailing on top, okay, right down so you get that sort of in scoop in there. We've got full length intakes as well, which is a nice touch. Uh, multiple parts though, so we've got two halves going together, a top and a bottom. So we might have some fitty things going down on there. That intake literally plugging in, as you can see, straight into there like that. Same uh, mirrored on the other side. Okay, then it's into the actual main gear and nose wheel wells. That's putting all of those in as you might expect. And then obviously you've got the front half and then the rear part uh, for those as well going right the way through. So that's put in, in the actual intakes, sorry, the um, nose wheel system. We've got the little uh, camera area down there in the front, putting the main gear ones in as well, and then dropping this down. This is looking like a bit of a nightmare with all these little fits. It'd be interesting to see how well this goes together. Okay, full length trunking as we say down to the first stage compressor blades, that's quite a nice touch. And then dropping them in, okay, again more things to join up, I can see this being a nightmare. Okay, wing section, very nice one piece top piece wing as you can see down, the lower parts being put in there as you can imagine on like that. And then obviously various different things if you're going to have the power down uh, with obviously uh, the flaps and the ailerons put in or you're going to be doing them up so you've got options on those. Okay, then we've actually got the top system joining down. Again, this looks like it's gonna be a barrel of last putting all this in. Okay, we've got a little box system going in the back, which is gonna be made of photo etch, putting that in. And we've got a little plate uh, to hold up between the forward and backs. Uh, the engines, so we've got the nozzles going down, put in there as well, so they're gonna be fitting in. Tailplanes going on, let's hope that they're a nice fit. Okay, and then we've got rudders uh, into the uh, vertical stabilizers, those being put on, and then we've got these fences on the wings going in. Nice little bit of detail down here into the canopy fit. Okay, so we've got the rear canopy and the front canopy. So we've got uh, a little bit of photo etch going in there. Good level of detail went into all of those points. That's quite nice to see. Okay, main gear going together, putting all those bits in there as well, that nice dual gear being fitted down underneath and then installing that big heavy duty undercarriage into those wells with the various supports, as you can imagine. Nose wheel going on, tires, a couple of lumps, bumps, things like that all being fitted into it. And then obviously we've got the actual intake uh, lips being put in. So it looks like you've got an option either open fully or slightly tapered in. 
and then we got speed brakes being putted on doors going on we've got that fod uh, uh, deflector uh, off the back of the front wheel so it doesn't flick anything up into the body and then we've got those speed brakes being fitted and then obviously all the doors the lights the various things again lots of little bit of photo etch which is quite nice just to detail up all those wheel wells and those areas and everything else like that okay then we got little bits and pieces going on here so we've got little bits of aerials um, and then obviously little air scoops things like that all being fitted to the underside and then again nice to see in photo etch we've got photo etch for the IFF system uh, the probes the sensors and the various angle of attack instrumentation uh, and things like that being fitted into these okay then we are talking cut when installed it's a bit different so it looks like you cut these out once they're in. Very different. Pylons being fitted on. Okay, then we've got your whip, uh, weapons fit, weapons fit, weapons fit even. So we've got the four long range uh, missiles being put on there. Okay, so going down the bottoms and then we've got the medium range and then the short range uh, missiles being fitted on your fuel tank. Obviously you can fit in whatever weapon fit you'd like down in there as it shows down the bottom. So we've got those big old R60s um, R40s uh, and everything else going down there as you can imagine so very nice indeed all right stencil data as you can imagine pretty extensive on this one um, the color call out looks really boring on here but trust me I think if I was to be doing this we'd be livening up that very very nicely uh, instead of just doing it boring gray all over it okay and this is where MRP paints would come into their own very nicely couple of options as you can see down there got one with a little bit of markings on there with those beautiful big red stars okay weapons ones uh, as we can see down here so we've got the big r33s or the russian phoenix okay and we've got the little uh, r60s the r77s r73s things like that various things going down in there fuel tanks the pylons again a little bit of um, data on of those that's quite a nice touch that's the first time i've seen them do that that's very nice indeed so that's your box art done in there Actually, I must admit that's one of those things. Call me an anorak, stick it on the wall. Right, so where do you start? Now, this is a big aircraft. Let's just simply say this sprue measures on its own 40 centimetres. So in we go. So <laughs> this gives you an idea how big this lump is. This is a big old brute. Uh, I must admit, I do love the Russian stuff. So, uh, look, I haven't even got a big enough camera angle to get all this in. This is horrendous. Okay, it's going to be a pain to try and show you all. But as you can see, some big old stuff down on here. Uh, it is a big old sprue. We've got some strengthening, which is quite nice just to hold this all apart and everything else. And even these wings have got strengtheners in and stuff like that. So if we can try and fit some of this in. Um, if we can catch this in the light, as you can see, we've got... It's that usual way that they tend to do it. It's actually quite a nice texture. It looks like it's flat and horrible, but it's not too bad at all. It's a nice texture. We've got some nice details, some nice riveting in there uh, and everything else like that. It's just on camera, it's a bit of a pain when you're dealing with LED lights everywhere. Okay, so that's not too bad at all. And then we've got the other side, just down in here. Very nice. So this is your underwings. You can see it in the light there. That's working quite nicely. Some nice details and then generally, I'll get the fuselage to light up as well like that. You can see we've got some very nice details all through there. All that panelling and stuff really is working very, very nicely. Okay, we've got no problems with that at all. That actually doesn't look too bad at all. Uh, it looks pretty good as well. Just down on the sprue looking at it, it's square, it's level, uh, it's in detail and everything else like that. No sign of sync marks, flash or anything else. We've got a huge big uh, <coughs> intersection here. And again, I always say it every review, but it's really nice how um, Hobby Boss and Trumpeter as companies protect some of their smaller little details. That's quite fragile, that tail. And it is nice that they've got a little box section that just covers it, just in transit, stops this taking a hit and getting deformed and everything else like that. So as you can see, some nice stuff down in there. We can probably move this camera just a little bit now. A nice level of detail. This is pretty complex stuff down in here. We have got a couple of nasties, if we're honest. Um, that, and that actually is, I must admit. Right, okay. One of the weird things is, and this is where I'm sure you guys will tell me if I'm right or wrong, this detail all down this side is raised. 
Should that be raised or should that be recessed? Because some of it's recessed, some of it's raised, and I can't understand why they would do it if it's not. So I'm assuming this paneling, you catch it and the light, come on if I can find an angle. It's very difficult on this plastic, there we go. This paneling you can see all down here is all raised details. Okay, as soon as you get down here, they go to recessed, but they're recessed up here. So I'm assuming they should be like that. The only thing is, I'm thinking, hopefully you can see it. You can just about see it. You see this huge seam line? Unfortunately, it's always gonna be an issue at the moment for Trumpeter and Hobby Boss seem to not be able to do this sort of slip molding uh, without this big thing. And unfortunately, that's gonna take a little bit of work because unfortunately we've got detail all in here so you're going to lose that to try and get rid of it and this side is equally i try and catch it you can probably catch it in the light running all down here so it's literally this entire length of how it is and this is something we didn't see on the amk one because they seem to have a better slip mold technique we've got these little guys here these little white ones if you're ever wondering what these are this is just the injection port so that's where the the actual plastic is injected into it the styrene and then it literally comes off and they just cut them off because uh, this is a one-piece mold uh, right the way through and you can see we've got a little bit of strengthening work and everything else going down in there but unfortunately that's quite nasty we don't really like that at all but the level of detail down in here for the weapons mounts and things like that is pretty good. No problem with it at all. It's just that it seems a bit odd. We've got a bit mixture of all the different mediums down in here. But I think, in, you know, if it was me, I would sand, fill, take care of that way before it ever got near a model. So, because it's easier to do this, don't put it together, then deal with this. Because you can deal with this right now. You could mask off the area. Personally, I'll probably put my homebrew um, styrene filler into it, leave it for four or five days to go rock hard. Then I'd sand that and it'd be job done with no problem at all. Easy rescribe, easy re it with that. Okay, so, that's the end bit. Next we have, Again, very nice to have this all protected and done. Do you think somebody sits in a factory and takes care of this? And that's to protect this very delicate framework. So, very reminiscent of a, a uh, tornado, isn't it? F3? All right, just me. No problems at all. That entire sprue actually looks pretty good. The thing is, it's it's Hobby Boss, you almost have that sort of expectation of Hobby Boss to a level. This is pretty much what it is. It's not a shocker, but we do have some very nice recess. It's a, the nose is on. I don't know, it would have been nicer to have a little bit of detail down in the nose and now having it as a separate, it would be. We've got a little bit of lipping around the top here off of this mold. I'm sure it shouldn't be like that, but then I could be wrong. Okay, it just has this little lip running all the way around here. Generally, all the details having a sort of standard look around here don't look too bad at all. They all seem to be pretty much okay. These bulkheads, various things like this, the intake doors, these are really nice. Actually, this framework is quite nice for the actual canopy. I'm assuming this is internal framework. We'll see in a, little, in a moment, see how it is. But that's quite a nice touch. You can paint it, do it all separately, everything else like that. Obviously, it's devoid of any internal details because you're going to be making up and in there. Eject pins all seem to be pretty much out of the way. No problems with them in any way that's gonna show. Again, a little bit clunky. It's not as nice. Um, have a look. I'll link it into this video as well, but certainly have a look at our versus review where we'll be taking this kit and putting it right next door to the AMK one so you can see exactly what we've got. So down in here, as you can see, we've got those huge big intakes, which are absolutely huge. Okay, and you can see, again, pretty good, no problems at all. Nice riveting details, panel lining all seems to be pretty very good, no problems at all. Just not as crispy and as nice perhaps as I'd like to see. Tiny little bit of flash on it as well, you're just going to want to make sure you're clear of and things like that, but not too bad at all. Got the in inner part. These are the little lips that are going to fit onto this one, if you, depending which way you're going to do it, for the intakes and things like that. Generally, this is very good actually, because most of these parts are all going to go on here. So all the lumps, bumps and things, they're all in here just like that. Okay, nice detail. We've got recessed and raised details 
uh, down here for these intake doors, sorry, the uh, gear doors as well, no problem with those at all. Generally pretty good. You, know, you might just want to make sure, you can see on this dark one on this corner, a little bit raise that ejector pin, just make sure they're flush and out of the way. Not too bad. Okay, um, do we get two of these? Oh no, quite separate. Okay, so this is your intakes, which, okay, yes, it would be really nice to see them as uh, one piece, but it's got a lot of detail down in here. Hopefully you can, I catch it in the light. There we go, you can see we've got quite a nice level of detail into those intakes down there. It's just gonna be a bit of a handful doing it, but we are um, devoid of any uh, ejector pins. They've all been taken care of and moved out of the way. We've got, obviously, ejector pins all around the outside, so they're not in anywhere. And you can see on this guy as well, full length details. Turbine blades, obviously they're all undone and everything else. And we do have very nice one piece without huge seams or anything else like that for the actual nozzles themselves. So that's not too bad at all. We've got some nice details in there. No problem with those. Similar setup for here on the other side as well. So down in here, we've actually got obviously first stage compressor blade, things like that, nozzles. We've got the afterburner rings running down here uh, and all these areas, so no problem there. And then again, very similar to the other side, we've got the detail down on there and we've got the detail at the other end, as you can see. Catch it in the light. There we go, just down like that. But yeah, the afterburner rings, very nicely done, nicely detailed. The nozzles back here, things like that. I think that's all pretty good. Depending on how well those intakes all club together and go in, I think we'll be all right. If they're not, then you could be in for a little bit of world of pain. Okay, so <clears throat> this is quite nice, I must admit. Unfortunately, we have got some heavy uh, ejector pins in amongst this, but most of you, you can see around here, looking at some of these smaller parts, they're pretty nicely done, very small sprue gates, things like that very tiny tiny little parts certainly down on here we've got the little hubs things like that for the wheel hubs the gear uh, all these different sections they're looking pretty nice all the way through this and we've got the pylons and the fixtures down at this end no problem and then as i say we've got this nice level of detail down in here unfortunately we've got huge ejector pins in amongst these now are you going to see these probably not but it they are big and if you did want to take care of them, they're a little bit of a pain. Same goes with these in here as well. So we do have them running around. Just depends on what level uh, areas are going to come in, if they're going to be noticeable or not. Okay. Nice to see. We don't have ejector pins, though, on any of the actual parts themselves for the smaller stuff. It just seems to be around here and there. Okay, so... Okay, I'll have a pile of plastic in a minute. So, this is your uh, vertical fins. As you can see, if we catch them in the light, not tons of detail on these. I thought it'd be more riveting than that, but you can see it on there. It's all very nice. It's there, it's crisp, it's very thin. Okay, uh, this is where we've got the, the actual um, flaps and aileron system going down on there. Looks very close, like the ejector pins have almost come through. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it looks like they're about to come through. Have a look on the other side as well. And there's your other side as well, that's pretty nice. So down on the blank side, again, watch things like this. We've got raised ejector pins. They will give you gaps and then you've got to try and fill them to do them. And again, on these parts here, you see we've got these raised ones, you want to get rid of those. Make sure you're clear and devoid and make sure these tabs as well, they're nicely smoothed out and flat. That way you don't get any gaps and things like that. But you can probably see here, like this is a huge ejector pin and it's raised. If I colour it, there you go, you can see it. That has almost gone through, so just be mindful of this. So is this one. They are very, very close to being punched out. It's a thin piece of plastic, but again, this one up here, that's a nasty one. That's quite pronounced. So if you were to laminate that together, you're going to have this bulge in there, and it's always just going to be fighting. It's going to be trying to pull itself apart. So again, as I always say, just run a sanding stick over it. If you can see colour, i.e. the sander mark, then just get rid of it and obliterate it. But as you said, spending 10 minutes just checking all your parts first will save you a lot of work. Okay, so we've got multiple weapons bits down in here, as you can imagine. We'll just pop one of these out. Uh, so down on here, we got some missiles with some big old fins, and I forget what they were now, which type they were. Uh, they'd be buried under here, I think. <coughs> okay, so these will be, I take it, the R40s. 
Uh, big old fins on these, no problems at all. Some nice details you can see on these. Seems to be all good. Again, they've got a little bit of flash on them, a little bit of bits and pieces. Just make sure you're cleaned up and everything. But it just gives you an idea of the scale of this entire thing. They are big old lumps uh, on this guy, as you can see. They are big missiles. Okay. So that's those. Okay, then we've got some tail planes down here. You certainly get a lot of plastic. Okay, so... All right, we've got some big swirly lines, but luckily for us, they are not anything that's in the surface. Again, it's funny, you look at certain sprues, and to me, this sprue is a lot more detailed than the other sprues, but uh, generally looking around on here, we've got this speed brake door down here, which has got a lovely level of detail down on the inside of that. We've got lots of recessed and raised details in that one for a speed brake. That's a lot of work, okay? And then obviously down here, we've got the, the ventral fin down there. You can probably see all that riveting detail down in there, these little air scoops, and then working our way up on these tail planes. You can see we've got a little bit of detail. As I say, all this webbing mark, don't worry about it, that's just cooling. It's no problem at all. And again, these little doors, we've got details on the inside, we've got riveting detail, things like that. They're all very smooth. And then literally it's just a, a copy over these. This is your nose wheel door. It's got huge big ejector pins, but don't worry about any of that. It's got a back cover on it, so you're not gonna see it. Okay, right. this is the last of the big sprues. Then we move on to all the small ones. Okay, so again, nicely laid out, nice and clean, no problem at all. I can't see any sink marks or anything else literally like that. It seems to be all very nice down on here. So we've got the smaller outer pylons, as you can see. They're going to take some little bit of work, making sure, again, as we've looked at all around this, just make sure those ejector pins are nicely out of the way. And then the smaller stuff, uh, as you can see, no problem with those at all. Very nice, got the control column, things like that down there. The wheel hubs, again, you've got uh, uh, four big wheels on the back. Very nice indeed, and we've got some of the gear implementation. This is, just gives you a size of this thing. It's a 148 scale, it's like a 132nd wheel. That's just the rear hub, the deflector for the FOD system on there. And then obviously we've got the pylons, two-piece. Just down in there like that, that's a very nice touch. Right, okay, so, um, where are we gonna start? Okay, so that's going with the seats. Got a dual. Okay, little guy here. So this is your actual ejector seats. Again, so you've got your harnesses just molded in, pretty boring. You might wanna go down the aftermarket route for a seat because quite frankly, this is pretty crap, if we're honest. I think an aftermarket seat would make this kit. It's got huge big ejector pins hanging out of it and all the rest of it you can have to clean up. I would definitely recommend the aftermarket one in there. Okay, right, some of the smaller missiles. All right, so we've got some of the little R60s here on a little pylon, again, joint. They're quite nice, they're cute. If you've ever built anything from Hobby Boss, you're going to have tons of weapons, spares, and things like that. So, But we've got the pylons there and everything else. That's quite a, a nice little setup for the twin rack for those. So you get two sprues of that. Okay. Big jets, lots of fuel. So you've got some nice detail. Actually, it's quite nice having the plumb line running through it and all the rest of it. It's big, it's bulky, it needs a little bit of trim up. It's got a little bit of flash on the back of this, but it's a nice mixture of raised and recessed details on these. Got the nice raised weld marks. Then we've got some little bit of recessing and stuff like that. That's actually quite nice, all of those. I don't know, I'm just surprised there's not more detail down here on the back. I thought you might be seeing something, but perhaps that's just me. All right, so that's just down there now. Okay, we are getting there, trust me. So we're gonna get a load of these, we're gonna get four of these. These are gonna be your big, uh, the R33s, the uh, Russian version of the Phoenix. Again, big old missiles, beautifully detailed. We've got some nice recessed and raised details on all of these, even down to the collar, the fins. Nice riveting detail on all these fins uh, and the bits and pieces like that. That's actually quite a nice missile there. Very nicely done. The thing is, when you're doing things like this, it's almost they are mini models in their own. Okay, so I was wondering where it all was. We've got the cockpit coming up now. So we've got the instrument panels just down there like that. The cockpit tub itself is pretty boring, to be honest, and very softly, very generic type of switching. I'm not sure how accurate even that is. All right, but um, the instrument panel doesn't look too bad. Uh, and the rear one, and then we've obviously got the nozzles, which again, 
I don't know, I'd just be looking for more detail perhaps there pretty well smooth on the inside. We do have some ribbing work and things like that on the outside of them, but I just thought perhaps they might be a little bit more detailed than what we're seeing there. Okay, so we also get some lots of little bits. <clears throat> so a little bit of photo etch, so usual thing, we've got the harnesses and those bits that we saw during the actual looking around the instructions, that's just on there. It looks pretty thick, it feels quite heavy. Okay, we do have some metal uh, parts for the undercarriage. It's quite a nice touch to see them done in metal. Now I don't know how strong they are. I don't know if they are literally just soft metal. It doesn't feel it. It feels quite strong. I can't bend it that easy but we get those as well. We've got some rubber wheels. So we've got some rubber tyres down in there and everything else like that. Again, yeah, I'm never a fan of rubber wheels. I'll probably be going down and they are available. Some resin aftermarket ones because they're pretty solid hard rubber to do weight on wheels I think it's going to be quite a problem with that. Okay so this should be the front windscreen. Oh, no, the rear. Again the level of detail on these is absolutely fantastic. Usual thing crystal clear no problem at all but it's nice to see that level of detail down in the insides. Very nice on that. Beautifully done. Okay <clears throat> A couple of these. Okay. <clears throat> Again, very nicely done. The level of detail down in these cockpit areas, I think with that photo etch and everything else for these canopies, is going to be absolutely beautiful. Very nicely injection molded as well. Crystal clear, no sign of distortions, wobbles and all the rest of it, or cloudiness. Very nice, all of those parts indeed, no problem with those at all. Okay, so last up, I think, that is it for goodies in the box. What a big box. Okay, <clears throat> so just to look at the decals because we missed those earlier. So, what we've got is two very large sheets, so nicely protected as always. So we've got some instrument panels, as you can see, just down on here for the cockpits, the various bits and pieces. And again, these are the side ones I do believe went through. And then we've got your sort of generic blurb, I'll call it, because it's just squiggles and lines, but it looks the part. Um, but this is for the weapons fit. So obviously we've got the big ones for the R33s, the R40s, 60s, 77s, 73s. Okay, so that's pretty standard. And then <clears throat> you can see on these, they look really thick, but actually they don't feel it. That's the weird thing. Not too bad at all. Um, the blue, I don't know. The, the it Obviously, as you can probably see on here, you've got two types of blue. It's just the light blue looks a little bit patchy, but I suppose if you go for a more weathered look, then you're pretty much spot on. And even with the blues and the reds, it's like they're weathered, if that makes sense. Because you look down on here, this seems to be quite faded as well. So actually, I'm not too worried about that. Unfortunately, this is just blurb. It's not real, I don't think so. You certainly can't read it. It's very much out of focus and everything else. I think it's more sort of your generic what it is. I think, you know, Hobby Boss Trumpeter, they do that thing of sort of guessing if it looks like that, that's how they put it down and all the rest of it. So there we go, that is Hobby Boss's um, big MiG-31 Foxhound. Now, to be honest, this is sort of part one of a review. You've seen the kit, to be honest, I don't think it's a bad kit. It's pretty much there. There's a few things that worry me. Those intakes being four part, trying to get all that together and everything else, that's a little bit of a worry. The cockpit as well seems very, very basic and everything else. The way that the front end, uh, the parts, obviously you've got two halves coming together, you've got the top, the back, everything coming in. I can imagine that's gonna be a fit nightmare and everything else like that. There is another option out there which is cheaper than this kit as well. It's about 20 quid cheaper and that is the AMK one. Now we do have the AMK one over there. So if you'd like, hit the link below and you can see a versus one where we're gonna take both kits, put them side by side and really see which one the best one is. But if you have, or do wanna go down the Hobby Boss route, I think it's gonna take a lot of care and it's gonna take a little bit of work. But this isn't a straightforward kit. It's very big. 
uh, it's bulky and everything else like that. I think it needs some work. I would go aftermarket wheels, aftermarket uh, ejector seats, definitely. Uh, but apart from that, I think it will build up into a very nice kit with a little bit of care.